In this video, we will discuss what Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem, which I'll abbreviate as MVT, are. All right, so I want to start with Rolle's theorem. So the preliminary part of this theorem says, let f be a function such that f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b. It needs to be differentiable on an open interval from a to b. And the third condition is f of a needs to be equal to f of b. So the y values at a and at b need to be the same. Okay, so this is the preliminary stuff. And then the conclusion is then there is a number. There is a number c in the interval, the open interval from a to b, such that the derivative at c equals zero. All right, so I want to give an intuitive reason for why this might be true using a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of a function that satisfies these conditions. All right, so I'm going to draw some axes. So draw some axes, and I'm going to label a point A and a point B on the x-axis. And I need the outputs at A and at B to be the same. That's what the third condition says. So maybe I'll make it this high. Okay, so there are my outputs. Those need to be the same. And then in between those points, my function needs to be continuous the whole way on the closed interval and needs to be differentiable on the, the whole in open interval. Okay, so, so no matter what I do, no matter how I try to draw my function, at some point it's going to have to sort of turn. And maybe even it turns one more time. It turns like this. And at those points where it turns, so at this point, I have a horizontal tangent line. And even at this point, I have a horizontal tangent line. So I'm going to label this first point where that happens. I'm going to call this one C1. And at the second point where it happens, I'm going to call it C2. Okay, so Rolle's theorem says, well, there's got to be at least one number like that where the derivative equals zero. In my picture, there's two, but there's got to be at least one. All right, so let's write that down. There's at least one point where the derivative equals zero. And in this graph, there's two of those points. There's one here and there's one here. Okay, and that's guaranteed to happen as long as my function is continuous the whole way on the closed interval. The differentiable condition is also important because that guarantees I don't have something like a sharp corner. Um, yes, all right, so that is Rolle's theorem. So we are ready to state the mean value theorem next. All right, so I'm just scooting that up to give myself a little bit more room. But the mean value theorem is going to be really similar. It just removes that third condition that says f of a and f of b have to be the same. So I begin again by saying let f be a function such that f needs to be continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and it needs to be differentiable on the open interval from a to b. Okay, so it's got to be smooth and no sharp corners, that sort of thing. And I want to say that a and b are not the same. They're not the same number. Okay, so in this situation, we're, re we're ready for the conclusion. Then there is a number. There is a number c in the open interval from a to b such that the derivative of f at c is going to be equal to, this one's a little bit more complicated, but still not bad. It's going to be equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So initially when we look at that, we might be like, wait, that's definitely a little bit more complicated than f prime of c equals zero. But there's a really good geometric intuition for why this happens. And that'll be more clear, I think, once I draw a picture. So let's do that next. So let's draw a picture to try to explain why this has to happen. So I'm going to draw some axes. I'm going to draw some axes. And on my axes, I'm going to label A. And I'm going to label B. And I'm going to draw some points at A and at B. And now those Y values don't need to be the same. So maybe at A, I'll say the Y values down here. And at B, I'll say maybe the point is up here somewhere. All right. And I'm going to draw a curve. So I'm going to draw a curve. It's going to look something like this. And maybe it does this. And then it goes down and does this sort of thing. Something like that. So I have a curve. 
All right, so when I look at the curve and I think about both sides of this equation, the conclusion of the mean value theorem, the left hand side, or sorry, both sides should look familiar graphically. The right hand side is a slope of a secant line. It's the slope of the secant line connecting the points when x is a and when x is b. Let me draw in that secant line. Okay, so here's the secant line connecting those two points. I'm just drawing it in with a dashed line. Okay, and the left hand side, the, the derivative, this represents the slope of a tangent line. This is a slope of a tangent line. So graphically what this is saying is, as long as my function is continuous on the closed interval, and it's differentiable on the open interval, so smooth, no sharp corners, that sort of thing, there's going to be at least one point, this number c, in between a and b, where the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. In other words, where the tangent line and the secant line are going to be parallel. So let's draw in points like that. So it seems like there's going to be, let's see, down here, my tangent line looks like it's going to be flat. But as I go over here, it's going to get a little bit more and more positive sloping. So maybe somewhere over here, the tangent line looks like it's pretty parallel to that secant line. That's one point where it happens. Another point where it seems like it's going to be parallel is somewhere over here. Somewhere over here, if I draw the tangent line, it looks like it's going to be pretty parallel to that secant line. And in my picture, there's one other place where it looks like they'll be parallel. That's maybe somewhere here-ish. Somewhere here-ish, it looks like it'll be pretty parallel. So in my picture, there were three places where there's a tangent line parallel to that secant line. The mean value theorem says there's got to be at least one. Okay, I'm going to label some of these. So this x value, I'll call this c1. This next one I'll call C2, and this one I'll call C3. All right. So in fact, thinking about both sides of this as slopes, the Rolle's theorem is actually just a special case of the mean value theorem. If I go back to Rolle's theorem, if I were to draw in the secant line here, connecting the point where A is and where B is, that secant line is just perfectly flat. It's got a slope of zero. So it's it's actually just a very special case of the mean value theorem. We're saying, oh, these tangent lines are parallel to that secant line. So I'm not going to give a proof of Rolle's theorem or the mean value theorem because I want to focus more on being able to apply them. And I think that having that geometric intuition for why they're true is equally valuable. Okay, so the question I want to end the video with is, why do we need f to be continuous on the closed interval from A to B? and differentiable on the open interval from A to B for those theorems. And this we will investigate in the homework. So in terms of our goals for this section, we finished goal one, interpreting Rolle's theorem and MVT graphically.